Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're here in Sacramento, California for our meetup game at Capitol Casino. We had the notice up for all the players to understand that filming was in progress and into the poker room. Quite a few tables, they had a tournament going on during the day and had us mostly set up in this little side area with these three tables and we added a fourth as the tournament lost players. Okay, we're gonna jump right into this, but first let me tell you a little bit about the chips that we're playing with. There are yellow chips, which are $5 chips. The bluish green ones you're seeing are $1 chips. And the black ones are actually $25 chips. Now it's a 1-3 game with a $500 buy-in. However, you can match the stack in the room, meaning you can match the biggest stack in the room, which at the time when we started playing this game was about $1,000. We bought it for $500. Straddle is allowed under the gun, and you can straddle up to half your stack. All right, first game here, we got a $20 bomb pot to start the vlog off, guys. And with every dealer change, we're doing bomb pots. So this was the first hand of the day right into a bomb pot. At this table, we decided to make the bomb pots $20. Uh, some of the tables were 10, others were 15, so it was just up to the comfort level of everyone at the table, which was fine. Okay, in this hand, we're in middle position, and the straddle is on for $25. Now, we're sitting nine-handed at a one-three table. Uh, folds to me, and we're gonna make a raise up to- 75. That's right, $75. Folds over to the hijack, who re-raises- uh, $300. <laughs> <laughs> Table change! <laughs> <laughs> That's right, $300 to which Fish Poker exclaims, table change please. We've already had a couple big hands. Uh, this is about one and a half orbits into this table. Uh, we've already had a couple all-ins. Pretty been a pretty aggressive table thus far in about uh, the first 12 hands. Come on. So he raises the 300, we go ahead and push all in, he makes the quick call. He has about a thousand in front of him, so he has us covered with our $500 starting stack. Once or twice? Once or twice. I'll run it twice. Alright, twice. He asked, do you want to run it twice? I said, sure. So I've never really done this where anyone has asked, and I wasn't really sure, wait, what's the best thing to do here? So, you know, let's just have a little fun. I say, sure, that's fine. Running it twice. I roll over my pocket kings. Interestingly enough, he doesn't turn over his cards right away. So the, the first board runs out pretty clean here, and then the second board right away. There's the ace, and not to mention four to a straight draw. And he finally turns over ace king, so we chop it up and we split the blinds and the straddle, netting us about 12 bucks a piece. I'm gonna bomb pot. This hand here, we're in another bomb pot. $20 a piece, there's 180 in the middle before the cards are even dealt. Hey, I haven't looked yet. One of the players across the table been playing a few hands blind, so we were having a little fun with that experiment, not looking at our cards, at least to a certain point. Sure. I haven't looked yet. I'll check. Oh, I check. <laughs> yeah, I haven't looked yet. Everybody's trapping. Oh, oh. Ooh, that's a great card. Who's got that monster queen do song? Oh, come on, it's a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> when you can't even beat the board. That's the summer hand. All right, I gotta look now. So action gets checked to the turn, and a third seven hits the board. Middle position bets $50, folds to me. We finally gotta look at our hand. We see a queen, we have a full house, we make the call. River's inconsequential. He I call. You got a queen? I do. Oh. <laughs> he bets out 125 rather quickly, and I just make a quick call. Uh, merit for raising here, but uh, with a bomb pot, hey, a seven is possible. He could have had that. Really don't put on aces or kings. So just a seven is the only possibility where he has me beat. So we just play it safe, make the call. Uh, I think even if he bets a little bit more, um, I'm probably making that same quick call here. Thanks, man. Maybe. I don't know. Could be the slow roll of the century. All right. <laughs> I mean, this was the slow roll. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you didn't even look at your head, huh? No. Like yeah, until you bet. That's when I looked at it. I was like, oh. I know you said that. Okay, we moved over to our second table, the meetup game, and Think Blue Poker has come up behind me. He's gonna watch this hand for the live stream. Him and Fish Poker were live streaming on TikTok, so with a little pressure of him behind me, knowing there was people at home watching, uh, we looked down at 6-7 offsuit, middle position, but of course, uh, after a one limper to us, 
we're gonna raise it up and we make it twenty dollars to go folds over to the button he makes the call blinds fold goes back to the limper and of course he goes ahead and comes along we got 60 in the middle with 6-7 off suit. And we're off to a flop of 3-4-8. Really not a bad flop for us. We get a gut shot there. And ultimately, I don't think it's either one of these guys' ranges. And we can hit my range pretty good. I could be raising pre-flop here with any kind of pair of 10s or higher. Uh, checks to me. We put out a bet of $40. And both players fold. And we take down a nice little pot for the folks watching on TikTok. <laughs> The next hand to note, we're in the small blind and we look down at Ace Jack off suit. Under the gun limps in and the button limps in as well. I decide to make a raise up to $20. Big blind folds and under the gun makes the call, the button makes the fold as well. And we're off to a flop which brings two kings and a three with two diamonds. I elect to continuation bet here, and I put out a bet of $30. Under the gun makes the call, and the turn is a 10 of diamonds. I check, and he bets out $75. Now, I gotta be honest here. I do not remember if I have a diamond in my hand or not. So I decide, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and check back at it, see what I have. Obviously, if I look and I see a diamond, and I make the call, he's gonna know exactly where I'm at, but you know what? That's the risk you take when you don't remember your cards. So uh, we look back and lo and behold, we do have the Ace of Diamonds. So we have the Nut Flush draw plus a Gut Shot Straight draw if he is just betting with three kings here. We're going to make this $75 call. The river is the Jack of Diamond. I do like this card. I mean, it is possible he limp called the uh, pre-flop raise with maybe King Jack, uh, King 10 here. I check. He bets out $100. We have the nut flush, but just in case he has some kind of weird hand, even like a king three suited. Now, the fact I look back at my hand and I check and he still bets out into me <laughs> uh, leads me to believe he has a pretty strong hand. Um, so I'm just going to make the call here. Perhaps he does have the full house and he's just betting for value for that $100. Or even a queen nine of diamonds. So I put it out there and he turns over nine seven of diamonds. So apparently he did not see me look back at my hand or trying to represent something bigger. He turned the flush and we river a higher flush. You know what? We'll take it down. This hand here, Doug McCusker had just sat down at the table a couple hands ago. He's uh, two players over to my right. He's early in the action, and he raises it up to $15. He gets a caller, and I look down at pocket seven. So we're going to come along here. We're in middle position. No need to raise right now. Let's see a flop. But then the unthinkable happens, and everybody at the table, except for the small blind, makes the call for $15. Welcome to the table, Doug. We're off to a flop of four, five, six. Flopped ourselves an open-ended straight draw. It checks around to the player to my left who bets out $40. A pretty small bet, really, um, for this pot. And everybody folds over except for Doug, who just makes the call. But I elect just to call, see what happens on the turn, reevaluate there. The turn brings a 10. Not the greatest. Doug and I both check, and the same player masses a bet of $150. And he slides it out there, and, well, what the heck is that? But it looks like a giant dick. Yeah. Take a look out of starboard. Oh my god, it looks like a huge... Pecker! Oh, where? Yeah. Wait, that's not a wood pecker. It looks like someone's... Private! Doug decides to make the call. We contemplate for just a second, but with two flush draws out there, plenty of overcards either one of these guys could have, um, we just said to just go ahead and fold and let these guys go at it. The river is a ten of spades. Uh, Doug checks once again, and the guy instantly goes all in here. Uh, Doug faking the call, turning over pocket queens, and the other guy says, I missed. And Doug takes it down, doubles up. Uh, to get Doug's perspective on that hand, check out his vlog for this meetup game as he goes into his thought process on this hand. Okay, we're at our third table of the day now. Under the gun, limps in, and we look down at a king-queen offsuit. Uh, we decided to raise it up here to $20, and we get a call from middle position, from the cutoff, from the big blind, and the under the gun limper. And the flop is pretty decent. King, king, deuce. It checks to us. This flop probably isn't hitting any of my opponents too hard here as there's only one king left in the deck. 
couple of clubs out there, so we're going to check. And if one of the two remaining players bets out, then we can go ahead and spring the trap and raise it up. Everyone checks behind, and we're off to a turn of a four of hearts. It doesn't help any of my opponent's range. I feel a bet out here is just going to make him go away. So it checks around. I'm really hoping the river brings a card that I can bet at um, that will allow my opponents to make a call. And the river doesn't disappoint. An ace hits on the river. Now, while it is an ace of clubs, no one made a bet earlier, so I really doubt anyone has clubs. Checks to me. So I put out a tiny bet of $30, hoping that someone can make this call. It folds over to the cutoff, who does make the call. We show our kings, and we're good. Take down a decent sized pot. Okay, we're back at the original table that we started at, and we just lost with Ace-King twice, and we're on the button, and we're looking down at a 3-4 offsuit, and we're looking to take down a pot. There's a couple limpers in front of us, and we raise it up to $20. The small blind thinks for a minute, and re-raises to 105 Folds back around to me, and I decide, hmm, okay, I was just kidding. <laughs> I only show you that hand because the very next hand, we're in the cutoff, and we look down at pocket aces. There's been one limper, a raise to $15, and the hijack called the $15, and we're going to go ahead and raise it up to $65. It folds back around to the hijack, who originally just called the $15, and he decides he's going to make the call. We're off to a flop with two tens and a three with two hearts. He checks to me, not to worry about the ten, more than likely he has some kind of overpair to the board, underpair to my aces. I bet out $75. And I barely get the chips out before he says 200 and slides it out there rather quickly. He had about 140 back behind, so I figured if he was in for 200, he's uh, good to go. So I said all in, and I was expecting a snap call. Figured, well, maybe he has a flush draw here, and hoping he doesn't have a 10. But then he tanks, and he's bemoaning his decision. And he mentions the last hand, where I said I was just kidding, and he thought maybe I was getting out of line again. He puts the chips out there, ready to make the call. Ultimately, he makes a really good fold, and we take it down with pocket aces. We've moved to our final table of the night. We're under the gun in this hand, and we look down at pocket nines. We make a raise up to $15. And apparently the payphone near the bathroom is out of order, because under the gun, the cutoff, the small blind, the big blind, all come to this table to make a call. There's 75 in the middle, and the flop brings 10, 4, 9 with two diamonds. Checks to me with two diamonds, two of the straight draw, four other players. I want to narrow down the field some. So I put out a small bet of just $35. And under the gun plus two. No, well, wait a minute. Now let's look across to the cutoff, the player in red across the table. He already has his remaining stack in his hand before under the gun plus two has done anything. Ready to fire into the pot. Back to under the gun plus two. He raises to $100. And the cutoff releases his chips into the middle instantaneously. But he only has $80. My feeling is he's on a draw. Now the player who raised, he didn't three bet pre-flop. So I can probably eliminate queens, kings, and aces. He could be on a flush draw with some kind of ace king suited type hand. And it is possible I flop set under set here. So I'm just going to make the call. We're going to reevaluate on the turn. The turn brings a four of clubs. I decided to go ahead and check. If he is on the flush draw, I hope he bets at it again. But instead, he overbets the pot and puts out a bet of $500. So now I feel he seems to be protecting against the flush himself. As a set of tens, now having a full house, wouldn't bet so much. He'd want a flush draw to come along. Could be a two pair type of hand. Could be a combo draw of both a straight and a flush draw. And he just wants me to go away. But I'm not going anywhere with a full house. I have about 750 left in my stack. So it's 250 more to him. I go all in. He makes the call. We flip over our nines. And he turns over 10-9 for flopped two pair. The river brings an eight. The cutoff shows that he had jack queen for an open ended straight draw. And hit it straight on the river. But it was no good. And we take down large pot. 735 total. Two hands later, we're in the small blind. 
We get two limpers and the cutoff and the button, and we look down at Pocket Aces. The run good continues. We go ahead and raise it up to $20. Both the cutoff and button make the call, and we're off to a flop of Queen 9 5. I decide I'm going to go ahead and act like I'm just playing the big stack, going to bet regardless of what hits, hoping that one of these has a queen or some kind of draw here that they can come along. And I bet out $45, so more than half the pot. Unfortunately, both players fold. Oh. That was, that was the very next hand we're on the button and we look down at pocket jacks. Under the gun plus two limps in, the hijack who's been on a bad run and recently just rebought raises it up to $40. The cutoff makes the call and with our pocket jacks we're just going to make the call here. They're both smaller stacks here so there's no need to raise up. Let's see what comes up on the flop. Under the Gun Plus 2 also makes the call. The flop comes out 4, 5, 6. Rainbow. Under the Gun 2 checks. The hijack goes all in for 136. The cutoff makes the fold. I make the call and Under the Gun 2 goes all in. He only has 80 so he's in for less. The turn brings an ace. The river a 3. And the hijack turns over pocket 7s for a rivered straight. Nice hand. We play a few more hands after this. And then we wrap up the session. We meet up with the rest of the vloggers over in the bar. Uh, yeah. All right, guys. So, say uh, hello to Tan Poker here. How you doing there, Doug? Just to prove that I play with all you guys. So, we got Andrew. Hey, Lock, turn around. There we go. All right, so. And we got Bearded Poker over in Texas. Got to check out his channel. I'll put all their information down below, all their channels down below. Get in there real quick. All right. Going? Uh, Charles, we'll put his information down below. You're already following this guy, but you know, we'll put it down there anyway. So, <laughs> all right, we got Steve here at Think Blue Poker. What's going on? Yeah, man? Good, not good night tonight. It was a good night. So, hey, Brad Owen, give this guy a shout out, will you? Fish Poker. I call. Not only did I get to meet the vloggers, but I also got to meet Zeus. I know you've been watching Doug McCusker's vlog, and Zeus is an awesome dog. In the meantime, hit that like, subscribe, and make sure you hit that notification bell so you get notified when new content comes out. Well, thanks again to Capital Casino for hosting this event, allowing us all to come in there. Um, Doug McCusker, thank you so much for getting this whole thing set up, and all the other vloggers that came out to be a part of this. Andrew Locke, Check Race Charles, Hand Poker, Think Blue Poker, Fish Poker, Bearded Poker from Texas. What a great time we all had. Couldn't have been this successful without all of you guys. The staff did a great job keeping it going. Uh, they had a huge tournament, which didn't allow us to have as many tables as we'd like, especially with about 60 on the waiting list when we got going. But uh, we ended up with about four tables uh, max at one point in time. So it went really well. I look forward to being able to go out there and do another one. Uh, all the players were extremely friendly. We had a really good time, met some really nice people. So uh, Sacramento, thanks again for uh, having us out there. And it was a blast. For those of you that are interested in the crypto market, check out my other YouTube channel, Advanced Crypto Team. There you can learn all about Cardano ADA and learn how to get involved in staking. My partner and I have started our own staking pool, so check us out. Stake your Cardano with ACT. Well, until next time, we'll see you at the tables.